Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's SANS webcast. Meet your new best friend, DNS Security, sponsored by Cisco. My name is Carol Auth of SANS, and I'll be moderating today's webcast. Today's featured speaker is Rachel Ackerley of Cisco. If you have any questions for our presenter, please enter them into the questions window at any time. And with that, I'd like to turn the webcast over to Rachel. Thanks, Carol. Hi, guys. Um, I'm lucky enough to be your host today. If you were like me, or at least a few years ago, I didn't know what all the fuss was about. DNS security, what's the big deal? Been around for ages, right? How can this help me? How can this help my security program? Well, boy, were my eyes opened. And I hope after today's presentation, I can do the same for you. So as I'm boring you to death with my slides, actually, hopefully not, but I want you to think, how are you leveraging DNS in your security stack? DNS can see every connection destined to anywhere on the internet, whether on or off the corporate network. It's one of the most single best sources of data within your organization. And that's why I think after today's presentation, DNS security is gonna be your new best friend. So what are we gonna talk about today? Hopefully this agenda is exciting to you. We'll walk through the basics, what is DNS security? And I'll pause for some quick questions just to make sure you're not falling asleep on me. Then we'll cover how Cisco Umbrella can help you, how it can help you prevent not just detect threats, with a painless deployment, and we'll finish out with some good old fashioned Q&A. So what is DNS, right? Of course, everybody on this call has already heard of DNS, but let's level set on what it is and why it's important for security. DNS is a domain name system, and it's used to map domain names like cisco.com to an IP address. So think about it. When you call your friends or your colleagues or even your mom, do you look up their name in your contact list? No, that would be hard to remember everybody's number, right? You don't wanna to have to remember all those digits. So DNS was developed for really a similar reason. So you wouldn't need to remember the IP address for every website you want to visit. So what's the big deal? Why is this useful for security? Well, DNS is the first step in all internet connections. It's used by nearly all devices that connect to the internet. So because of this, adding security at the DNS layer allows you to block threats earlier, before a connection to your network or endpoint is ever made. So here's one of those quick questions I was talking about. We'll take a few of these breaks throughout the presentation. First one, it's a softball. What does DNS stand for? If you chose domain name system, you're correct. Ding, ding, ding. DNS is how domain names are translated into IP addresses. Next question, true or false? DNS is used by nearly all devices that connect to the internet. I'll give everyone a few seconds to think about this one. True. Why is it true? Because DNS is a protocol used by nearly all devices that connect to the internet. So that's why security at this layer is critical. It's gonna help you achieve the visibility and the protection that you need for your business. Okay, quiz questions aside, let's get back to basics. Um, what, what are the different types of DNS name servers? Authoritative, recursive, right? We've talked about the analogy of a contact list. Keeping that in mind, let's talk about the domain registrar. This is where domain names are registered. The domain registrar, for example, like uh, GoDaddy, will record and map the domain names to IP addresses, the same way you'd record names and phone numbers in your phone book. Authoritative DNS owns and publishes the phone book, and then recursive DNS services like Umbrella will look up the numbers for each name. So you may be wondering then, who resolves your DNS requests today? And it really varies by company. Most people and organizations leave their DNS resolution up to their internet service provider or ISP. But larger organizations may need, they probably have to deal with multiple ISPs, and that's because there's an increase in going direct to the internet, right? Some companies might try to address this issue by deploying a VPN, but we all know employees often forget to turn the VPN on because of performance issues, right? We all do it, Shh, we won't tell anyone. And that leads to challenges. Another challenge is working with multiple ISPs for DNS resolution means that your DNS logs are often in different formats. 
And last but not least, ISPs simply resolve DNS requests. They don't offer any visibility or network protection. So if DNS is used by nearly all devices, why wouldn't you want to add an extra layer of protection? It's already in your security stack, right? Easy peasy. So this brings me to our next question. What's the purpose of recursive DNS? Ding, ding. It finds the IP address of a domain for you so that you don't have to remember every website's IP address. And what? Authoritative DNS. If recursive DNS name servers don't already have a website, the IP address task, it will give or query the authoritative DNS hierarchy to get that answer. So essentially what it does is it provides a mapping to that intended website. So what if threat gets in and a machine is ultimately infected or malware will use command and control or C2 callback to communicate with the attacker for additional instructions to exfiltrate the data? Researchers from the Cisco Self-Watch team found that 15% of C2 callback bypass web ports. These are the ports covered by traditional web security systems. So you most likely have a gap in coverage if you're only relying on your secure web gateway or perimeter-based security. Cisco conducted additional research that found 91% of C2 callbacks relied on DNS. So by using security as a DNS layer, you'd have the ability automatically to block the vast majority of those C2 callbacks. Now, one final question. What percent of malware can be blocked at the DNS layer? More than 90, 91%. So deploying security at the DNS layer is gonna block those threats before they have a chance to reach your network. And as I mentioned, this was one of the last quiz questions. So if you're interested in taking a complete quiz yourself or sharing it with a colleague, um, I will go ahead and share that with you so you can access this quiz yourself. It's pretty fun, and it's a great level set on stuff that you might already know. And if you're like me and you're a negative Nelly and you're wondering, hey, that's 90%. What about 91%? What about the other 9%? Don't worry. If Umbrella's in your security stack, it can block connections and even proxy that traffic to specific URLs. So how can Umbrella help you? At the end of the day, right, we're all looking for simplicity. We're looking to make our lives easier. We have so many security products in our stack, and it's a challenge to keep on top of everything. With Umbrella, it's a cloud security platform. It provides you the first line of defense against threats on the internet wherever your users go. Think about that. That's freedom to work from the coffee shop, to work from the airport, and not have to worry. It's going to give your company peace of mind. How do we do it? Well, by analyzing and learning from internet activity patterns, Umbrella automatically uncovers attacker infrastructure staged for current and emerging threats. And that's going to give you the power to proactively block malicious requests before they reach your network or endpoint. So with Umbrella, what can you do? You can stop phishing. You can stop malware infections earlier. You can identify already infected devices faster and then ultimately prevent data exfiltration, right? You want to keep your job. You want to be the superhero at your company. You want to be helping people keep things safe. You don't want to be in the papers, right? Umbrella is going to help you. It's built into the foundation of the internet. It's delivered from the cloud. What does that do? It gives you complete visibility into that internet activity, no matter where your users are, across all locations. And we like to think it's one of the simplest security products to deploy and manage. So let's take a look and see where it fits within your environment. So think about where you enforce security today. This is what was compelling to me when I first kind of got into this side of security and using DNS for security, right? What do you do to protect your network now? What are you doing for your endpoint? You probably, if you're like me, had a range of security products deployed at your corporate headquarters or your branch offices, or now with more roaming users everywhere, all those laptops you have to worry about. Well, there's so many more ways for malware to get in, which is why it's important to have multiple layers of security. So what do we do at Umbrella, right? We use DNS as one of the main mechanisms to get traffic to our cloud platform. And then we use it to enforce security. Umbrella can be that first layer of defense against threats by preventing those devices from connecting to malicious 
or likely malicious sites in the first place. What's that going to do? Significantly reduce the chance of malware getting to your network or endpoint. And as we discussed earlier, right, DNS is the foundational component of how the internet already works. It's used by every device in the network. So let's take a look at some of the uh, key capabilities of um, Rella. So how, how do we provide this level of enforcement without delay? When Umbrella receives a DNS request, it first identifies which customer the request came from, and then identifies which policy to apply. So let me give you an example. So an Umbrella will determine if the request is safe or whitelisted, if it's malicious or blacklisted, or if it's risky. And then for safe requests, we're just gonna go ahead and route that connection as usual. For malicious requests, we're gonna route that connection to a block page and keep your users safe. For risky requests, we're gonna go ahead and route that connection to our cloud-based proxy where we can perform deeper inspection. So Umbrella not only protects against the initial infection, right? If devices become infected in other ways, Umbrella's gonna block the communication to that attacker server. Umbrella also will block direct IP connections and even proxy that traffic as well. So at the end of the day, with Umbrella, you're gonna stop data exfiltration or the download of ransomware encryption keys. C2 callbacks are blocked using the same DNS enforcement process. And in the event that a malicious payload is designed to bypass DNS and use a direct IP connection, Umbrella goes beyond DNS to provide malicious IP blocking and enforcement too. So what's the benefit of using a single global recursive DNS service? Using Umbrella to resolve all external DNS requests allows you to see all internet activity from all locations and networks globally. Because our security solution operates at the DNS layer using existing internet infrastructure, we can offer that network security with zero added <clears throat> latency. Execute security at the DNS layer also enables consistent policy enforcement and allows our customers to see which cloud apps are being used on their network. So how quickly do we resolve DNS requests? When relying on a cloud security platform, performance is incredibly important. We received third-party validation of our DNS resolution speed, and I'm sharing it here with you on the screen. You can see a Microsoft engineer from their internet ops team conducted an unsolicited test using Thousand Eye software, and it compares resolution speeds of top public recursive DNS providers around the globe. Thousand Eyes is a company, for those of you who don't know them, that monitors internet performance for, for large enterprises. So you can see, not only are we fast, but Umbrella has maintained 100% business uptime since we were founded in 2006. Finally, because of all of this traffic going to our cloud platform, our view of the internet is like no other security provider. The Umbrella Global Network includes more than 30 data centers around the world, and that resolves over 180 billion, with a B, DNS requests from more than 100 million users over 160 countries every day. That's a lot of data. We peer with the top ISPs and content delivery network to exchange those BGP routes and ensure we're routing requests efficiently and not adding any latency over regional DNS providers. So not only do we have a massive amount of data, but, but perhaps more importantly, a very diverse data set. It's not just from one geo or from one protocol. And it's this diversity that really sets us apart. It's this diversity that enables Umbrella to offer unprecedented insights into staged and launched attacks, learning where those threats are coming from, knowing who is launching them, where are they going to, how wide the net of the attack is, and more. And this data acts as the foundation for our statistical models that help us run Umbrella. So what do you get at the end of the day? Enterprise-wide coverage in minutes, not months. Umbrella is absolutely, hands down, the easiest way to protect your users. I remember when I came on the team, I, I thought, no way, no way. And then I said, well, I have to do it for myself. 
And I figure if I can do it in a couple minutes, then anyone can. And, and proof positive, I encourage all of you to try it yourself. Umbrella is delivered from the cloud. What does that mean? No hardware to install, no software to manually update. And because we use the domain name system, DNS, as the primary mechanism to get traffic to our platform, forwarding your traffic to us is as simple as changing one, one single setting in your network devices. Can't get easier than that. For on-network coverage, you can see here, you can protect all devices, even those you don't own, just by pointing your external DNS request to the IP address for our global network. Umbrella also, of course, is part of the Cisco Universe of Family Now, our product. We integrate with Cisco SD-WAN, Cisco Integrated Service Routers. Those are the ISRs, the 1K or the 4K devices. We provide that protection to branch offices, to branch users. Um, we have connections with Cisco Wireless LAN that provides secure Wi-Fi. And if you use any of these, you simply upgrade to the latest network device software, configure the confection via an API. It's that easy. We also help you with off network laptop coverage, right? Today, you never know where your users are gonna be connecting. So if you use Cisco AnyConnect, simply enable the umbrella roaming security module for protection, and that's gonna keep you safe when the VPN is off. So you may be thinking, but gosh, I'm not a Cisco AnyConnect user, what about me? Well, we have a lightweight standalone agent that works with any VPN, and it's been proven in over, I think it's a, a million deployments. Our roaming client is a virtual, what we would call like a, uh, what's that term, bump in the wire for every internet connection. It's transparent to users and does not cause any latency or performance issues because the footprint is just really small. We also have an umbrella Chromebook client, really popular with our schools, which enable you to protect Chromebook users, whether students or anybody are on or off the network. So I hope I've convinced you that this is the easiest security product you'll ever deploy. It's simple to get started with Umbrella. You can begin blocking threats in just minutes. And all you have to do is sign up, point your DNS to Umbrella, and boom, you're done. So I'm showing right now a link that gives you access to our 14-day free trial. You can sign up and see for yourself. I always believe seeing, seeing is believing. It only takes a couple minutes to register, and you can see the value of Umbrella in real time. And a lot of people think, well, who's this for, right? This is for anyone, from small businesses without a dedicated security professional staff to multinational enterprises with complex environments. It takes mere minutes, and you're just going to gain a new layer of breach protection and internet-wide visibility, whether your users are on or off network. So I can't encourage you enough to sign up, check it out, or have one of our cloud security representatives um, after this webinar to help you get started. So I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes. I know some questions were coming in and my colleagues been sending them to me um, via email. So I'm gonna take a look at those. So give me a second to, to, to get my head straight on these questions that are coming in. And we will address some of your frequently asked questions here. All right. Let's see. What? kind of licensing or subscriptions are available for Cisco Umbrella? Well, the, the easiest way to answer that is for most Umbrella packages, we license by the total number of users with internet access, and it comes in uh, one or three year subscriptions. Uh, we count the number of employees that connect. I think that's what the question was ultimately getting at. So we count the number of employees that connect IT provisioned or user owned devices to local or even remote networks. So for organizations though with guest Wi-Fi networks, um, we have a, a specific package for that, it's a little bit different. The WLAN package offers pricing per access point, and that helps you protect an unlimited number of users. We do not use the number of concurrent or active versus total users in the licensing. That's how um, appliance-based solutions do that. So unlike appliance-based solutions with performance constraints based on the number of concurrent or active users, Umbrella is infinitely um, scalable. Hopefully that addressed that question. And if there's additional questions, you can always reach out to one of our sales reps. We always um, are very good at quickly responding and, and making sure you have all the information that you need. Uh, next question, what happens if the service goes down? Will I lose all internet connectivity? Okay, so what happens if the service goes down? Will I lose internet connectivity? 
Um, the Umbrella Global Network has maintained 100% uptime since it launched in 2006, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Um, but don't take my word for it. Uh, we publicly display our operational system status and stats, so you can always see the latest service stats. Um, that's at a domain at status.umbrella.com, um, so you can check that anytime you want. And if one of our global data centers has scheduled maintenance or an unanticipated issue, our, uh, any cast infrastructure, it's going to instantly reroute your DNS request to the next closest data center without any disruption in service. So I, I don't think the concern about losing internet connectivity is going to be a valid one or anything you need to be concerned about if you're looking to um, try Umbrella. And I would just encourage you to try the free trial, right? You can do it at a, a branch office if you just want to do it at one single location to just get a, a, a sense for what type of malware we can see. And we have uh, amazing reports that you can run even within the trial to get a sense of what type of visibility you're going to gain that you don't currently have. Uh, let's see, one more. I think we have time for one more. Let's see. Um, how do you identify the username of an off-network user using Umbrella? How do you identify the username of an off-network user? Okay. Uh, you can get user information. We have a connection with Active Directory, so you can get that user information through the Active Directory integration with the Umbrella Roaming Client, <coughs> roaming client excuse me, or the Cisco AnyConnect integration. Um, and I think there was other questions. We do have a, about an API. We do have our open API, and that's going to enable you to connect and share data with third-party systems, and that really does help. I didn't speak about it today, but helps you with incident response, being able to prioritize, you know, across the sea of alerts that you probably get as a security professional, right? How do you know what to fix first? How do you know what to prioritize first, right? Umbrella has this open API, it's bi-directional. You can pull information into Umbrella and then help you prioritize and see what you should remediate first. Just another benefit from Umbrella. So I think I have foamed at the mouth for long enough on this. I hope that you have left today's presentation feeling like DNS security is a secret weapon that you already have at your disposal. You just need to point point to Umbrella and start getting the value. And with that, I'll hand it back to Carol. All right, well, thank you so much, Rachel, for that great presentation, and to Cisco for sponsoring this webcast, which helps bring this content to the SAN community. To our audience, we greatly appreciate you listening in. For a schedule of all this and all SANS webca webcasts, please visit sans.org forward slash webcast. Thank you, and have a great day.